What is your name? Molly. What is your quest? To make another cape. What is your favorite sewing tool? My deceased grandmother's sewing machine with which I carry on her sewing legacy and make capes. No capes! Hello friends and fellow pattern architects and welcome back. If animals could talk, which one would be the rudest? Last video I went over what modifications I want to make to my cape pattern based on the mock-up that I made. And now I want to go through how I'm going to alter the pattern pieces to reflect those changes. I know not all of you will be doing the same changes as me though, so I've divided the video into chapters and you can navigate them as you please. So this is my house at the moment. It's under major construction and there are workers in multiple parts of it at pretty much any given moment. So while I would have loved to sit down in my sewing room and talk you all through the changes as I did them, that was not going to be an option. So instead, we'll be bopping back and forth between past Shannon at work and current Shannon narrating. It is what it is, and this week life handed me very noisy lemons, so let's carry on, shall we? It's time to roll up our sleeves and roll out some clean paper. I'll be starting with the simplest modification first, which is tweaking this button placket in the front. I started out by tracing out the original pattern piece onto a clean sheet of paper. My paper happens to be translucent, so I was able to lay the original piece underneath and trace over it, but you can just as easily trace with the pattern on top. Once I had copied over the outline and all the other notches and markings, I started by first chopping off the bottom portion of the panel, roughly 7 centimeters, in order to eliminate that bottom button and then I took the nearest round object at hand and used it to gently curve the bottom corner. In order to guarantee symmetry on these curved portions, I folded the paper in half to cut both sides at the same time. Now I know that I mentioned in my last video that I think I want to combine this piece with the main side front panel. So I went ahead and marked off the seam allowance here, which will let me properly align the two pattern pieces when cutting them out. This only works because my paper is translucent though, so if your paper is opaque, you should probably cut the piece out at this line. The next modification on my list was to change the shape of those pockets, because while they kind of work with the 1960s sort of style this cape is giving me, I want mine to give off more of a 1940s sort of vibe, and the 40s were all about boxy lines and angles, and so I'm going to modify them to look like this illustration here, done in 1937. First, I whipped out the original pocket pattern because I want to keep my pocket approximately the same size and traced out some rough borders as guidelines. A good look at this illustration shows that the pocket is an elongated pentagon, so I played around with some lines and angles until I had a shape that looked pretty good. Then I used that as a base to draw the smaller inner pentagon, which if you look closely is an even more elongated pentagon than the outer one. Now these pockets look gorgeous, but they don't seem to be incredibly functional. Not only are they attached on the outer part of the cape, where putting anything heavy in them would really weigh the cape down and make it drag strangely on your arms, but I think they opened here at this vertical slit, which doesn't seem to be very practical. So besides attaching mine to the front panel of the cape, the part that sits flat against the torso, I'm also going to change where the pocket opens, leaving this side of both layers open rather than the top. Next up were the slightly larger modifications that were both on the back panel of the cape, where I not only want to add a bit more volume, but also some slits to pass my backpack straps. I'll tackle the backpack issue first since it's a bit more finicky. So first I needed to figure out where exactly my backpack sits when it's on my back, and where the straps would naturally like to pass through the cape. So I thought, sure, I'll just put on a mock-up, 
throw my backpack over it, and mark some holes. But it turns out that it's really hard to get an accurate marking by yourself when doing this method because the cape just keeps getting bunched up under the straps. I ended up having to remove the straps from their buckles completely and then doing this fancy move to flip my very non-history bounding style backpack onto my back and then hold it there with one hand while trying to mark out the placement with the other hand. And seriously guys, I promise I tried to film this clearly, but it was tricky enough just doing it, let alone making sure it was framed properly, so I apologize. The good news is that once I took the cape back off and measured, where, off, my and measured where my marks they were, were they were almost perfectly almost mirrored in terms perfectly of their distance from the center back seam, which was a really good sign. So I measured their placement, again with framing and focus clearly in the forefront of my mind, and even the two lines up to be perfectly symmetrical. I then cut these new slits open and passed the straps of my backpack through them in order to test my idea out, and viewer, it actually worked nearly perfectly. I learned that I want my slits to be slightly larger than I cut them originally, just so it's faster and easier to pass the straps through, and that I might move this bottom button up even a little bit more just so this little wrinkle doesn't happen, but overall I'm super pleased with this solution. Now, my idea here is not just to cut two holes in my back panel, because I want these holes to be as invisible as possible, and I think the best way to do that is to actually cut the back panel into three pieces, one center back panel and two side back panels, with the slits for the backpack straps falling perfectly on that seam line. Am I overly complicating this cape just to be able to wear a backpack with it? Yeah probably, but that is also completely on brand for me, so I'm rolling with it. The rest of you can keep your cape patterns nice and straightforward if you want, but if you are going to add the slits in, please let me know, because I'm actually super curious to see if anybody else out there is as passionate about this point as I am. So back at work, I first traced out the back panel onto a new piece of paper before making any modifications to it. Remember that I'll not only be splitting this piece up to add in those slits, but I'll also add some more volume to the cape overall. In order to mark out the placement of the slits on the pattern, I first had to measure where they sat on my mock-up, and here you can see the unintentional benefit of using a plain white fabric. And then I transferred those measurements to the pattern piece, being sure to take into account the seam allowance. Once the slits were marked on the pattern, I simply drew a line from the collar to the bottom edge of the cape that passed right over those markings. In a second, I'll cut along that line, splitting the back panel into two pieces. But first, I wanted to add a bit more volume. Originally, I wanted to slash and spread the pattern piece in the middle, but as I looked at it, I decided to simply change the angle on the far edge of the piece, just under where the shoulder curve ended. This was 100% done by eye, and I didn't want to go crazy here, just adding a little more volume. With the vertical line drawn, I needed to draw the bottom edge of the panel following the existing curve of the cape. At first, I tried to use a ruler to help me eyeball this, but I wasn't fully pleased with the results, so then I decided to cut out the bottom of the cape, and then use the cutoff portion to continue the line to the new section. This gave a much better result. And for those of you that are rushing to the comment section to point out that I could have just used a string, tied around a pen, and found the one perfect anchor point from which the original curve was drawn and just continue it, no. I tried that, and the problem is that this cape pattern is not a perfect circle, so that method doesn't work.
But anyways, now that I have the extra volume added on to the back, I'll just transfer this same amount over to the front panel, which is a pretty straightforward process of, again, tracing out the original pattern piece and then using my newly created back panel to transfer over the additional wedge of volume. I also went ahead and added one set of registration notches while I was there, just for good measure. All right, so, so far we have altered the button placket, designed some snazzy new pockets, split the back panel to allow for backpack straps, and added a bit of volume, both along the side front and side back panels. And all that leaves is drafting our lining pieces. And the good news is that for this cape, it's really fairly easy, because nearly all of the facings are cut as straight strips with no significant curves or corners. So for ease of explanation, I'll be using these miniature mock pattern pieces as visual aids. Now, if you were doing this on a pattern you had drafted yourself, I personally find it much easier to do this process without the seam allowances confusing everything. But since the Vogue pattern has already provided us with facing patterns and they have the seam allowances included, I'll go ahead and keep them, even though it will make things a bit more confusing. I'll also go over two different methods of doing this, one that is very straightforward and simple, and one that is a bit more complicated. Viewer, pick your poison. So let's say that this blue is our outer fabric or our fashion fabric. This is the outside, and then turning to the inside of the garment, the pattern gives us a facing piece, and we want to add a lining. And between the facing and the lining, the entire inside of the cape should be covered, so that when the facing and the lining pieces are sewn together, they should be the same size as the outer fabric of the cape. Is everyone with me so far? So the first method to do this would be to cut your lining the exact same size as your main fashion fabric. Then you can take your facing pieces, fold under the seam allowance, line up the outer edges, and top stitch the facing onto the lining layer. Then, if you want, you can go back and carefully trim the excess lining fabric to eliminate some bulk. This is probably the more straightforward way of doing it, especially if your facing pieces have lots of curves, and I find it less confusing both to explain and to understand. So if this next technique I'm going to cover doesn't make sense to you, please feel free to come back and do method number one. Method number two involves trimming the lining fabric to the right size before sewing it to the facing. And like I said, it can be a bit tricky if your facing pattern already has seam allowances. And let's look at why. So once again, we have our fashion fabric, the outside here, and we need on the inside the facing and the lining to fully and perfectly cover it. Let's start by making a duplicate of the pattern piece. This will become our lining pattern. Now we can lay it on top and line it up, and then if we take our facing piece provided by Vogue and lay that on top where it should go, one might be tempted to cut the pattern for the lining fabric here along this outer edge. And that would be fine if our patterns didn't already have seam allowances included in them. So if you're drafting your own pieces and you don't include seam allowances in your pattern, this process is basically done. Lay your facing down and line it up, then trace this outer layer and voila, this would become your new lining pattern and you would add your seam allowances on afterwards as you cut the fabric out. But if the pattern for your facing has a seam allowance, like ours does, and you would cut it out here, you'd have left no room to sew the pieces together. And then when you inevitably did sew them together, the inside layer would end up too small. Okay, you think? So I'll fold under the seam allowance here and then draw my line, and there's my new pattern piece. Not so fast. You're on the right track, but you've only accounted for the seam allowance on the facing and not on the lining. So go ahead and draw that line, but then remove your facing pattern and add a seam allowance onto this piece. And now, voila, you can cut it out and you have your pattern piece for the lining. 
The good news is that most of the facings in the Vogue pattern at least are straight and the same width for the entire span of the pattern piece. So you can actually just measure the width of the facing and subtract the width of two seam allowances, one to account for the facing and one for the lining layer. Then you can just subtract that amount from the outer edge of the main pattern fabric, mark that line out, and carry it all the way up the pattern piece. The only piece that gets a little tricky is the facing of the side front right at the very top here as the facing widens out a bit, and this part you'll have to measure by hand. Thanks for sticking with me so far, and I really hope that that made sense to you. It's clear in my head, but that doesn't always mean that I communicated it clearly, so if you still have questions, please feel free to ask them below, and I'll do my best to answer and maybe try and reword my explanation in a different way that hopefully makes more sense. Next, it's going to be time to whip out your sharpest sewing scissors. You know, the ones that you've got stashed away in a secret location so that no one else is tempted to use them for, say, opening a bag of potato chips, because next up we're going to be cutting into our real fabrics. Before you click on over to the next video, however, do me a favor and give this one a little thumbs up if you found it helpful. Let me know if the instructions were clear, if you're going to be applying any of these modifications to your own cloak, or even just the first place you're going to wear your new cape. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!